Which one should you choose? Poles, planks, or something otherwise? Today's video, we're gonna be looking at what kind of supports you should use to maximize the growth in your plants. First, I think we need to define what each pole is. So a moss pole, I think we all know and love this as kind of the 2020 version of staking our plants because it has that added moisture, areas where roots can dig into, and because of that, we see some major benefits to it. However, planks or just rigid structures in general are starting to make a little bit of a comeback. Now, the reason for this may not just be stylistic. It could be because there are some benefits to actually growing the plant and in particular, bigger, better leaves. Studies have shown the type of support you've used can actually affect some things like morphology of the plant, biomass allocation, which it sounds fancy, but essentially means how and where the bulk of the mass is put on, the form of growth that happens with the plant, Plant, along with physiology of the plant. Now there are five different categories of plants that climb. Twining, leaf climbers, and tendril climbers are not going to be discussed in this video, but the ones that will be discussed are root climber, which is your classic like aeroids. So root climbers are notorious for using the mechanism of finding nooks and crannies or regular spaces to climb up the plant. So in the wild, this would actually be tree bark or rock and not necessarily a moss in some way or a plank. It, those two are very unnatural to the plant to climb. They're looking for nooks and crannies. So they're gonna use their regular spaces as the way to hook themselves on. And the better the irregular space allows for hooking, the more it changes the biomass allocations and the overall structure of the plant. So when horticulturalists look at this from a study standpoint, they are looking at the host tree is what they call this. And so the host tree, they're looking for very specific characteristics such as the texture of the outside, whether it's smooth or rough, if there is moss or some sort of moisture collection and also the diameter. So one thing that they did find is the diameter of the host tree did affect whether or not the plant would take off up the host tree. The general consensus is around 15 centimeters was the max diameter a plant could go around and upwards on. Now, with that being said, if there was irregular spaces or nooks and crannies that the roots could bend into going up the host tree, the plant would select that and the biomass allocation and just the physiology of the plant tend to complement this. So what does that mean when we're looking at a moss pole? When looking at a moss pole, we can very quickly discover that there isn't necessarily any irregular spaces or hardy structure to the pole. A majority of the attachment is through vines interweaving into that moss pole. Now, if you're able to keep that moss pole, pole moist, and I don't know anyone who's able to do this in a pretty heavy duty fashion that would allow for nutrient water uptake, we technically could get more nutrient capture, which ultimately is less stressful for the plant. If you've ever seen a Monstera, they're very notorious for this, sending out very long, 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 long roots. Those roots, the sole purpose of those is to simply get the biomass of the plant to the ground. So once it hits the ground, it can send out nutrient capturing roots. So the roots themselves, while they are designed to uptake some ambient moisture, some ambient nutrients, just based on the way the cells are layered. It's not the, the main purpose. The main purpose is to get to that canopy floor. And this has been noted in several of the scientific journals that I looked at. So I personally think that a moss pole is great if you're able to keep it moist, but it doesn't necessarily give it that sound structure that a plant is looking for. So with a plank, we're starting to see more of a host tree environment where that plant is able to secure itself structurally to the board itself, which will change morphology, physiology, biomass allocation, you name it. However, there are ways to make stakes and poles and planks a little bit more valuable to the plant with these irregular spaces, if you will. So one of the first things that I did on one of my poles, it's my, I have this Adansonii behind me and I also have a Burl Marks like right here. So my Adansonii, I have kind of, I have a stake and on that stake, I have kind of like a rough sphagnum moss map. And then I have twine, like juke twine, kind of going around it, little knots and juts on it in hopes that my plant would climb it. 
I haven't seen very good results with it. However, on my other pole, I have juke twine and then I have X's made out of juke twine to make kind of irregular spaces. Again, not quite what the plant's looking for and not a direct mimicking of a host tree that we would see naturally occurring in the wild. So the next best thing and one of the things that I'm finding works currently pretty well is actually attaching my vines to my wall with little tiny command strip type things. So I stake my plants on and then I'm able to give them in a regular space. Now there's two forms of this. There's a twist tie version and then there's like a sticker with a top on it. The plants tend to really enjoy this. It gives them something to attach to that's firm and structurally sound while climbing upwards. The reason why the plant is trying to climb upwards both in the wild and in our environment here in our homes is simply for sun. The way a lot of these journals put it was to enhance light acquisition, which simply means the plant is climbing for sun. The climbing for sun allows for more photosynthesis to take place without the dappled shade of a canopy. And I can see that in my plants when I'm growing them, there are different ways of growing in regards to the way that the light hits them. So with that being said, I would choose to use a plank when necessary and give it irregular structures to climb up. Now this doesn't have to be this Amazon purchase that I made. It could be something as simple as hot gluing rocks onto a board or making a, a juke twine kind of a regular mossy structure on the front. Something for those roots to grab onto because it's a root climber and then ultimately go upwards for that light acquisition. We want the plant to feel secured and firm because that ultimately is what's going to change the morphology of the plant, give us those bigger leaves and that better growth. Now, if you have something like a monstera or something of that effect and you see a lot of runners going and they're really starting to plummet to the ground, this could be a sign that the plant may be lacking nutrients or just wants a little bit more given to it. So I would apply a liquid fertilizer in that case. But with that being said, I hope this helped you choose between a moss plank or a wall, I guess in my case. Anyways, I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye.